Good afternoon, grade 4. For the past few days, we dealt about probability, right? On our first topic, I discussed with you what we called probability in words. How are we going to describe probability in words? So basically, what we use there are the concepts like likely, unlikely, we also have sure, impossible, and equally likely. So here are the terms being used if we want to describe the chances, the likelihood of an event to happen, or simply their probability. So when you say likely, if you still can remember, it means it's more than half of your possible outcome. Unlikely means it's less than half of your possible outcome. Sure, it means it's equal to your possible outcome. Your favorable outcome and possible outcome are just the same. Impossible means there's a zero chance for that event to happen. And when you say equally likely, it means that your favorable outcome is the same with the half of your possible outcome. Remember, we did express this concept into lines like this, wherein zero means impossible. So, on the middle, we have one half, which is equally likely. And on the last or the end part of our number line which is 1 this is sure so less than half we have unlikely and more than half we have likely so these terms are used if we want to express probability in words again we have likely which is more than half unlikely which is less than half Equally likely, which is the same with the half of your possible outcome. Impossible means there's a zero chance for that event to happen. And sure means your favorable outcome is the same with your possible outcome. We also discuss probability in numbers, wherein we just simply follow the formula number of favorable outcome over number of possible outcome wherein in this particular way the probability is expressed into fraction and take note that since your answer is in fraction you have to simplify that in lowest term if necessary or needed only yesterday we also discussed the application of probability in the graph wherein we read the data on the graph itself and then just follow the formula that is being used. So for today, what we are going to do is we will apply the knowledge of probability to understand word problems like this. So in order for us to solve these word problems, we have to remember the concepts of probability. So now let's have the first one. So, let me read it with you. Suppose out of 20 students, 5 students scored more than 8 on a test and 15 scored less than 8. If I pick one of the 20 students at random, what are the chances that I pick a student who scored more than 8 and a student who scored less than 8? So, for this problem, in order for us to get its probability, we have to first find what's the possible outcome. Okay, it's 20. Because as you can see here, the total number of students is 20. Okay, now, let's answer the question one by one. What are the chances that I pick a student who scored more than Eight. So, let's go back with the first statement. It says there, 5 students scored more than 8. 
So, our favorable outcome now is 5. So, let's dis describe that into words. So, 5 out of 20. What's the half of 20? 20 divided by 2 is 10. Is 5 less than or more than the half of our possible outcome? It is less than half. So, therefore, the probability of picking a student who scored more than 8 is unlikely since our favorable outcome is less than half of our possible outcome. Now, let's express this one in two numbers. So again, you just have to follow the formula number of favorable outcome over number of possible outcome. So that will be 5 over 20. Simplify the fraction. Get its GCF for us to get its lowest term. So, 5. And then we have 20. How many 20s? Or how many 5 rather? How many 5s are there in 20? So, it's 4. 4 times 5 is 20. So, 20 minus 20 is 0. So, its GCF is 5. So, 5 divided by 5 is 1. And 20 divided by 5 is 4. So, the probability of picking a student who scored more than 8 is 1 4. Okay? Now, let's have the next question for that problem. How about the probability of picking a student who scored less than 8? With the same value of possible outcome, let's find the favorable outcome now. It says there, 50 scored less than 8. So, our favorable outcome is 15. So, in this given outcome, we can say that 15 out of 20 chances that we can pick a student who scored less than 8. So, look at this one. The half of 20 is 10, right? Our favorable outcome is 15. Is it more than or less than the half of 20? It's more than. So, the chances of this one is likely. Since 15, our favorable outcome is more than the half of 20. Now, let's express this one in two numbers. 15, our favorable outcome, over 20 as our possible outcome. Now, let's simplify that one by getting its GCF. So, we have 20 divided by 15. How many 15s are there in 20? 1. So, 1 times 15 is 15. 20 minus 15 is 5. So, let's have 5 as our new divisor and use 15 as our new dividend. So, how many 5s are there in 15? It's 3. So, 3 times 5 is 15. 15 minus 15 is 0. So, its GCF is 5. So, divide both sides by 5. So, that will be 15 divided by 5 is 3. And 20 divided by 5 is 4. So, the probability of picking a student who scored less than 8 is 3 now, let's apply that one more in our next problem. So, let me read it first. Kale wants to distribute one candy to each friend on her birthday. So, she has 10 chocolate candies, 12 mango candies, and 18 strawberry candies. What is the probability that a friend will get a mango candy and a strawberry candy. For this problem, you have to figure out first what's our possible outcome. So, in order for you to get that, you just simply add all the given numbers. So, we have 10. We also have 12. And we have 18. So, 10 for the chocolate candies, 12 for the mango candies, and 18 for strawberry candies. So, let's add them together. 2 plus 8 is 10. 
So, 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 4. So, the possible outcome for this given number or problem rather is 4t. Okay? So, now, since we already have the possible outcome 40, let's answer the question one by one. So, what is the probability that a friend will get a mango candy? Now, so look for the data showing how many mango candies are there. So, it's 12. So, now, 12 is our, our favorable outcome. So, following the formula, number of favorable outcome over number of possible outcome, we have 12 over 40. Now, remember, we have to simplify the fraction, especially if needed. So, we have 2 divide 40 by 12. So, how many 12s are there in 40? So, what I am doing right now is finding the GCF of the two given numbers. So, we have 3. 3 times 12 is 36. 40 minus 36 is 4. So, our remainder is 4. So, use that as our new divisor and then use 12 as our new dividend. How many 4 are there in 12? It's 3. So, 3 times 4 is 12. 12 minus 12 is 0. So, therefore, the GCF of 12 and 40 is 4. So, let's divide both sides by 4 to get its lowest term. 12 divided by 4 is 3. 4 or 40 divided by 4 is 10. So, here on our problem, there is 3 10 probability that a friend will get a mango candy. Okay? Next. How about a strawberry candy? So, go back with the information again on the problem. The strawberry candies there are 18, right? So, our favorable outcome is 18. Following the given formula, favorable outcome over possible outcome. So, we have 18 over 40. Right? So, let's simplify this fraction into lowest term by getting its GCF. So, 18 and then 40. So, how many 18s are there in 40? So, that will be 2, right? So, 2 times 18 is 36. Very good. So, 40 minus 36 is 4. So, let's use 4 as our new divisor and 18 as our new dividend. How many 4s are there in 18? So, we have 4. 4 times 4 is 16. 18 minus 16 is 2. So, it's not yet done. Let's use 2 as our new divisor and 4 as our new dividend. How many 2's are there in 4? So, 2. 2 times 2 is 4. 4 minus 4 is 0. So, our GCF for numbers 18 and 40 is 2. So, let's divide both sides by 2 to get its lowest term. 18 divided by 2 is 9. 40 divided by 2 is 20. So, therefore, the probability of getting a strawberry candy is 9 over 20. Okay? Now, let's have our last problem. My drawing book has 10 white pages and 8 pink pages. Find the probability that I will open the book to a pink page. Okay, so for this problem, first and foremost, we have to figure out first what's our possible outcome. So, the given numbers are 10 and 8. So, let's add them together. That will be 18. So, our possible outcome for this given problem is 18. Now, let's find out what's the favorable outcome. It says here, find the probability that I will open the book to a pink page. 
So, how many pink pages are there? It's 8. So, that will be our favorable outcome. So, using the formula, favorable outcome or the number of favorable outcome over the number of possible outcome, we will have 8 over 18. But this fraction can also be simplified into lowest term. So, let's divide 18 by 8 to get its GCF. So, how many 8 are there in 18? There are 2. So, 2 times 8 is 16. 18 minus 16 is 2. 2 and then 8. How many 2's are there in 8? That is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. 8 minus 8 is 0. So, therefore, the GCF of 8 and 18 is 2. Divide both sides by 2 to simplify the fraction. 8 divided by 2 is 4. 18 divided by 2 is 9. So, the probability of picking or opening the pink page from the book is 4, 9. Okay? Now, let's wrap up how did we solve word problems involving probability. First, you have to read the problem. Not just read, but you also have to analyze. So that you will know if the thing that you are going to find out is probability in words. You just simply write whether the probability is likely to happen, unlikely, sure, impossible, or equally likely. Or maybe the problem asks you to find the probability in numbers wherein you have to follow the formula number of favorable outcome over the number of possible outcome. Now that you already read and analyze, you have to take note of the givens on the problem so that you will know what's the possible outcome and the favorable outcome. Remember that in finding the probability in numbers, these two outcomes are very important because it's part of our formula, right? PO or the possible outcome is the total outcome happen and FO or the favorable outcome is the event that you just wish or wanted to happen. After getting the information for these two outcomes, you can now solve using the formula the number of favorable outcome over the number of possible outcome. And since your answer should be expressed in fraction, it must be simplified in the lowest term if needed only. Okay? So, for this topic, I hope that you understand the concept about probability and later on, as you encounter word problems like this, you will be able to answer it since you already know what the probability is all about. I hope you learn a lot for today's lesson, grade 4.